Welcome back to another episode of Exponential Africa. We are at the Singularity U Australia Summit. It's been an incredible few days here in Sydney. I'm with the co-founder and chief revenue officer of the Tesla suit, Dmitry Mikhailchuk. And uh, it's quite a revolutionary suit. Dmitry, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, pleasure to be here. So the Tesla suit is the most immersive VR experience you can get nowadays. Do you want to just explain to us what it is well, as I'm proud to <laughs> say, to confirm, it is, it is. Um, so basically, we built a two-way communication tool to uh, output haptic feedback, so sense of touch, sense of collisions with the digital, within the digital world. And at the same time, we output to the computer our location, our motion, and uh, biometrical feedback, so our psychological reactions to the experiences. And so, so you put on this whole body suit and then you go, you put on a headset to go in VR, yep. you calibrate the suit so that it knows your movements and it knows you, 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 like, uh, how to uh, really make your body react properly. So currently, yes, we have some calibration process. So uh, basically because we utilize uh, uh, motion sensors which are based on magnetometers and accelerometers, obviously when we move suits uh, between cities, we need to calibrate to this specific point on Earth. But otherwise, if you would be using it in the same room, you don't need to recalibrate it. It oh, saves okay, the profile, okay. and then next time you fire it up, it's ready to go. Amazing. Um, yeah, uh, because it's uh, running on batteries, well, fully untethered, so it's easy to put on, just like your sports suit. And I had a little try now. I felt like when the wind, when I went into the virtual reality and the wind was blowing on my back, I could feel my back, the sensation on my back. Yeah, yeah. Pretty amazing. So the little demo that we built has a lot of toys, as you have experienced. And naturally, we just show how that will be um, observed in the context of uh, content. But what we're looking forward to is working with developers, really having their ideas, connecting with our tech based on our hardware platform. And I mean, how did you even come up with this idea? Where did it all begin? Uh, well, CT our CTO, Serge, was working on 5D cinemas. You know how the moving cabin and seats are moving and then you have sprays of water and air. Um, and the idea was, the train of thought was that it should, should the user look away, he could lose that or miss that the moment. So we really thought it should come onto the, onto the skin so the sensations are more vivid. And then the spectrum of sensations that we can generate is a lot wider. So we can create anything from light touch to stroke to like proper hit. Wow. And so that gives us the widest, probably most immersive technology uh, for, for VR and AR as well. Amazing. And uh, I mean, what, what, what sort of some of the applications you think it will be used for in the future? So lowest hanging fruit is obviously health and safety training for enterprise. Because this is where the implications of uh, create, making an error uh, are huge. There's always a cost attached to it, either direct or indirect. So uh, return on investment would be the best at this point in time. Now, when we manage to bring the price down a little bit, um, we are looking to apply to pro athlete sports uh, training and uh, medical rehabilitation in the future. We're finalizing some research, important research. Um, wow. We are launching the certification pro process for specific cases. Um, but also, we're always thinking about the end user. So five years down the line, we do want to release it to the consumer, so the games will be so much more experience. Yeah. Cheers, I would love to play games in a Tesla suit. Yeah, yeah imagine that. And um, what have you, so at the moment, it's currently only available to developers? Yes, we tend to supply to either large enterprise or developers or the government services. And how, how much does the suit cost now? Generally, we, we have to look at the deployment case really it does depend on the number of suits deployed it does depend on the amount of involvement from our side uh, api licenses uh, all those factors are actually chipping in but we tend to be quite competitive compared to other technologies that are available uh, because we mainly still think to still need to think about uh, competing devices that could be probably not in the form of suit but something else that helps training people so we, we keep it reasonable Okay, so um, how much was that? You didn't tell me. <laughs> As I said, <laughs> price and application. We need to look at the case, specific ah, okay. case. I don't so, want to scare anyone. Because it's uh, almost like the Matrix. It's like, you, you know, when you plugged yourself back in the Matrix, uh, you know, there's, the, there's that other side where, what if somebody hacks your Tesla suit? They could literally, you know, take control of your body. It's a very valid uh, question. So uh, we thought about it very early. Uh, part of our team uh, is one of the guys who is top three white hacker in the world. 
he's our head of security as well, incidentally. So he advises both uh, uh, military agencies and us on our own security. So currently we have AES-256 uh, military-grade encryption going on. So wow. if there's a man in the middle, somebody tries to eavesdrop or somebody tries to control the suit, the suit will simply shut down to any communication and will not respond. Amazing. Yeah, so. What else? Well, I saw that you, you had in the actual test that I did, there was an there was the opportunity to pick up a gun, shoot targets, throw mm -hmm. grenades. Uh, do you think this will have some sort of military application? There is a potential. Now, you know, you probably know already that the military has been using uh, first person shooters for reflex training for quite a while now. Uh, would add a little, a little bit more intensity to that, you know, especially when, when uh, young guys need to learn that weapons can be dangerous. And so you can't run around, you know, guns blazing, Rambo mode. In real life, there are implications, harsh implications. So, yeah. Let's look a little bit more on the lighter side. So now, now imagine I've got a suit and my wife is in another country and she's got a suit. Could we have a remote virtual touch with each other or you know, have some sort of sensual experience together? Uh, it has the social aspect in it. So we have already transmitted the virtual touch across the Atlantic. For the first time, we did, we did it in 2016, I believe. We filmed in a studio of Discovery Channel when the host was wearing our prototype, first prototype jacket. And then we had a Kinect camera on the other side in London and, and the girl was making a hug movement and he could feel it. Amazing. So that was done over the distance. So you can imagine, you can interact with your loved ones, give a hug, and we, this is what was quite appealing to uh, space travel as well. So, so this is sorry. when... Yeah, so, so if your astronaut's away from his family, you can still hug his family. Yeah, absolutely. And that would be a very, very huge thing for those who can't reach out those who spend um, years uh, years in space uh, being deprived of on earth sensations that actually puts our brain into overdrive and uh, complete you know disarray with, with the reality amazing yeah no it's really really exciting technology and we wish you all the best thank you very um, much. I think we've run out of time for this episode of Exponential Africa I really hope you liked that episode make sure to like and subscribe and go check out the Tesla suit it's going to be a game changer in the, in the face of VR.